Hello dolls, it's me, Babs, and today we're going to talk about the anatomy scan. The 20 week big scan. When you finally get to know the gender of your baby. So congratulations, you've made it this far. You're halfway there. Now at this point, you may have had a GYN scan at some point before you got pregnant or if you hadn't had a scan before you got pregnant you may have had a scan around six to eight weeks I'm going to link the video somewhere here so you could see if it matches what you went through also you may have had the NT scan or the first trimester screening scan where we measure the back of the neck and now finally it's time for the 20 week scan. This scan is a diagnostic medical ultrasound exam, basically. Just like when you go to the doctor to get an exam done, this is the exact same thing, except it's with a fetus and with an ultrasound. We do this scan around 18 to 20 weeks and we try to finish it by 23 weeks. Some places might stretch it to 24 weeks. In this video, I'm going to go over what you might experience during your exam and everything that we're looking for in your baby. And I'm solely going to focus on healthy, low-risk pregnancies, meaning your baby is genetically normal. You have no complications. Previous pregnancies have been normal if you have had a previous pregnancy and you are at a healthy weight. Now, some places might do this exam in two parts. The first part would be on top of the, top of the, on top of the, okay. The first part will be on top of the belly. We'll look at the baby from head to toe. The second part is done vaginally. That word sounds familiar, and it should sound familiar, because I did a video on pelvic ultrasound and what you should expect during your exam. This is a GYN exam or if you're pregnant at eight weeks, we do the same thing. We check on top and then we check vaginally. In the anatomy scan, we do the exact same thing. Now, not every place will check your cervix. That's why we're checking vaginally. We want to make sure that your cervix is close and long with nothing in the way. Okay, so when you come in, you may or may not be asked to get undressed, depending on the place and depending on whether they're gonna check your cervix or not, transvaginally. Regardless, you don't need a full bladder, at least in a lot of places, because your baby's big enough that we can see without a full bladder. If you wanna know why we might need a full bladder to check your baby when your baby is smaller, make sure you watch my pelvic ultrasound video. It explains everything. So you lay down on the table or on the exam bed and you show your belly. Now, I can't promise you that the gel is gonna be warm, but sometimes it is. And sometimes it's not, so prepare yourself. The first thing we check is the presentation. Now, what does that mean? Presentation just means the position of the baby. Is the baby head down by your cervix? Is the baby head up with the tush by the cervix? Or is it transverse? Meaning, is it laying across your belly? When the baby's head is down, that presentation is called vertex. When the baby's head is up, that presentation is called breach. Breach is not an emergency. Let me ask you this, and please leave a comment down below. What do you think breach means? Because many times when I tell the patient that the baby's head is up and I write the word breach on the monitor, they tend to freak out. But I'm not sure they know why they're freaking out. I just tell them that breach just means the position of the baby, but why don't you tell me down below what you think breach means? Also, sometimes I have patients freak out when they hear that the baby's head is down by the cervix. 
that's also okay. That doesn't mean that the baby's coming now. That just means that the baby's head is down there. I mean, the baby's head has to be somewhere, right? And the baby could be positioned in any way that it wants. Once we get the presentation, we get the baby's heart rate right away. After that, we try and go in order. From head to toe, we look at the brain. We look at the different parts of the brain. Right side, left side, and the back of the brain, called posterior falsa. We measure different parts of the brain, and we also look at the shape and the size of the skull. From there, we look at the face. Now, there's the frontal view of the face, and there's the profile of the face. Nobody likes the frontal view of the face. And why is that? Because it looks like this. Everybody wants this picture of the baby. Now here is when everybody wants a picture of the profile. And if you don't get a 3D picture, watch my video on why you didn't get a photo of your baby. And then you'll know why. We look at everything in the face. The eyes, the nose, the lips, the chin. We don't really look at the ears, at least in the places that I have worked in, we don't look at the ears, but some places might. Next are the arms and the hands. I like to take a picture of the hands like this, but some places they take pictures of the hands like this. Next, we take pictures of the spine. Now, it would be great if we could see the whole spine in just one shot, but most of the time we don't. We have to take pictures of the spine in segments. Next are the organs of the baby. Kidneys, stomach, bladder, diaphragm, even the bowels. Liver, mm, we may. It really depends on where you're getting your exam. The liver is not really something that we look at unless we see something there. Next is the heart. We take a lot of pictures of the heart. Now here's a disclaimer for you parents. If we take a lot of pictures of the heart, that doesn't mean that there's something wrong. Even though sometimes yes, but this is not what this video is about. We're talking about healthy, normal pregnancies and normal babies. If we take a lot of pictures of the heart, it could be one of several reasons or all of these reasons. We're not getting that picture perfect image. So we keep taking pictures over and over and over. The baby's not in a great position to get the perfect pictures or the baby's moving a lot. So it's hard to get the perfect picture. So a lot of the times, this is what happens. We'll start taking pictures of the baby. We'll start taking pictures of the heart. We stop because the baby changed positions. We look at something else and then we go back to the heart. Now some techs, I know I do this, might finish the exam and I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but we might finish the exam, look at our pictures and decide, mm, I could get better images. I'm gonna go back and take more pictures. That doesn't mean there's something wrong. It just means we wanna get perfect pictures and we're gonna go back and get them. Okay, I took a break and I don't remember where I left off. So I'm just gonna say that it's time for part two, the transvaginal portion. <laughs> Future Babs here, letting you know that that is not the end. I accidentally deleted a footage of me explaining everything else that we're going to check during your anatomy scan. I completely deleted the part where I say we're going to look at both femurs and the bones of the calves and the feet. Some places might measure the bones of the calves or the lower legs, the tibia and the fibula. Also, some places might measure the bones of the forearms, the ulna and the radius. And I have mentioned before that we measure the skull or the head. We also measure other parts of the baby just to make sure that it's growing appropriately for the gestational age. So the three things that we have to measure are the head. There are two parts of the head that we have to measure, the head circumference and the BPD. Then we measure the abdominal circumference. Next is the femur. Thank you for watching and leave your questions down below and check out my other videos that I have for you. Ciao!